Hey, Facebook. So I have a few minutes to talk. Um, I'm waiting for my client who's running a little late. So while I sit here, lie here, and just kind of think of something to do, I thought, why not talk a little bit about who is it that comes and cuddles with me? What kind of people actually do this, you know? And, and there's sometimes people ask me in a derogatory way, like, you know, like really you can cuddle, it's easy to find people to cuddle and cuddling is really easy and touch is really easy to get and you know, who would ever pay for that? <laughs> I get that quite often. Um, and they, they do it in a way to like look down on people that, you know, maybe don't have that kind of advantage. And so I'm just gonna go through really quickly what kind of people might benefit from cuddling or what are the kind of people that I see. So uh, here it goes. So the one that I think is the most dramatic story, the one that I think captures my attention the most, is, is the things that I had no idea were going to happen to people. Um, there's some people that are come from a military background, either are enlisted right now or who are retired and have dealt with um, lots of tragedy and a lot of pain. And so for our military community, I, um, I'm, I'm saddened by the things that we've had to see and experience. So when they come for a cuddling session, I'm amazed at the vulnerability and the, the willingness to be just to lay it all on the line and talk about things that they've seen and experienced and um, some of the heartbreak that I've been able to hear stories about. So for them to be able to do that, to become vulnerable, sometimes shed tears and be held in a safe place, in this brave place, I'm, I'm deeply honored to be that person that they can do that with, something that they can't do it even with their therapist. And then we have those who have experienced PTSD, who have um, had, you know, years of, of insomnia, inability to sleep, night terrors, and that's hard. I mean, when you can't sleep, you just start, you start to go crazy. I mean, there's, there's, this isn't even exaggerating. It's, it becomes a mental health issue. And the testimony of people coming, cuddling, and going, going home, and finding themselves asleep be able to sleep for a couple hours and then that night sleeping through the night without night terrors. I mean, I don't know. Again, that could be just anecdotal, could have just been that one person, but that's pretty impressive. That amazes me. And I don't really take the credit for it. Then I was just present and I was there. I was willing to do that for them. Not everyone is in a relationship in which their partner wants to touch. So, you know, what do those people do? They want to stay married, they want to be in their families. And their families, their or their partners or their family members, they don't touch. Um, so they come to me, and I know that as, as I say that, I kind of get a little hesitant to say any more about it because um, I can imagine some people thinking, you know, that they're cheating, and that you know brings up a bunch of questions about you know um, fidelity and what cheating is and what affair is, and, and I know that's hard, and that's not for me to answer right now, but it's a need touch is a need and so um, finding alternative ways that keep everyone safe and and you know and getting needs met is really I think a priority for each individual out there and they figure out how that works so yeah I have I do see people that are in relationships that are married or in a committed relationship that don't get touched and again their partners it could be because partners um, just are, don't like it um, maybe partners are touched out with their other, you know, their people in their lives. Maybe they're going through menopause. I mean, there's a lot of things that create that situation, that scenario where touch isn't part of a relationship. Um, I've seen widowers, so people that have lost their partners and it's been years and they're not ready to jump into a new relationship, but they miss it. They miss having someone to come to that can just hold them or to help to hold someone else. Let's see, I see people who are single and they are really tired of the drama of a relationship, the expectations, the need for performing, the, the struggle of um, you know, how do they manage you know, a person's all their emotions and all the things, and I kind of like that they come and they cuddle and they leave. And they don't have to deal with all the rest of the bullshit of a relationship. I mean, I get it, it's kind of copping out, and I think relationships are work, and or at least they require some time and some lots of energy. And it can be overwhelming, and if you're just tired of that, um, you know, but you miss the touch. Again, touch is an essential part of the human experience. It's what keeps us healthy. It does amazing things for the immune system. I haven't even talked about the benefits yet. So, like, um, immune system, hypertension, diabetes, 
uh, obesity. I mean, I think of all the things that touch the nervous system and touch mental health, touch can really do amazing wonders in. So there you go. Um, I think that's probably all I'm going to say for now, since I think my client should be here in just a couple more minutes and I need to put the music on and get the alarm set for our session. So if you're interested in this and cuddling, if you feel like I called you out in the list of people that I usually see, I'm sure there's other people I can't think of right now. And lots of people that are just curious, like, what is this? And they just come one time and then they go, okay, I did it. Um, and uh, yeah, and it's okay too. If you're just wanting to experiment it, um, if you wanna just be curious, if you just want to say you did it, <laughs> I don't care. There's people out there that are explorers who just wanna just do it. Um, cool, I'm good with that too. All right, well, I'm out of here. Mm, Vessels to all of you and take care, bye.